Welcome back to Sports Connection. It's time to throw a line out and get a hook wet. We've got Tyler Hudson. He and his pal Evan McNaughton are headed to Pickwick. First time in WKU Bass history. These guys have punched their ticket to the national championship. Tyler, thanks for coming in. Yes, sir. I'm excited to be here. I appreciate the opportunity. Oh, excited to have you, man. You're talking my, my, my lingo there, bass fishing. I love it, man. I grew up with it just like you have. And, man, you took it to the next level. I, I'm so jealous and envious that you have it in high school now, and now you can do it in college. Um, how excited are you, man, first of all, to get down there and compete with all this massive uh, amount of guys that are out there trying to do the same thing. But how cool was it just to qualify, Tyler? Yeah, um, we were pretty excited to qualify. It's um, it's not an easy thing to do. They take the top 10% of um, all their regular season tournaments. So some of these tournaments, uh, the one that we qualified out of had 153 boats. So uh, had to make the top 15 and we finished 12th. So uh, it's gonna be a good opportunity for us to get our name out there. I mean, and how do just, I mean, just kind of walk me through the process of each like kind of tournament that you like play in or just whatever it comes to just like setting up for the day to the time that you come back in and dock the boat. I mean, just what does everything entail? I mean, I know it's, it's definitely long days, long hours. I mean, just walk us through that for those who don't know. Okay. Um, yeah, preparation is a huge thing. There's so much you can do before you ever, uh, before you ever hit the water doing map studies and making sure your tackle's all set right and everything because sometimes uh, just one of those bites uh, is all you need and so and then on the tournament it's just um, trying to keep your head in it trying to be more efficient uh, when you lose a fish just put your head down and uh, get on to the next one you gotta gotta get five that's the biggest thing every day and so um, yeah just trying to do that and fish hard until you gotta be back so much goes into this stuff, Lauren. It, it, it's a passion and it's a pastime, but when you're doing it, you know, in a team environment right. uh, or to make a living like a lot of guys are out there doing, Tyler, making a living at it, it is a absolute grind. And you really got to know what you're doing. And, and nowadays you have so much, you know, front sonar you got si you got all this uh, technology nowadays mm -hmm. that we you know didn't have back in the day that that's helped it but hey everybody else has got it too so yeah. it doesn't really make you uh, stand out as far you got still got to know the, the nuts and bolts of bass fishing take us back uh, Evan and you you know with that tournament you, you you alluded to a little bit you guys let me tell you something about these two one of them's really good at this the other's good at that so they combine you know they're like the wonder twins out there they combine their skills and it pays off and it paid off qualifying didn't it yeah absolutely i think um me and him fish really well team tournament wise we uh complement each other well what one is average at the other one excels and so um i kind of felt like uh for our morning bite in that tournament that that kind of gave me an opportunity to shine and uh, i helped us put a couple fish in the boat but he uh, grew up down there and knows a lot about that um, current fishing. So in the afternoon, he really helped us uh, finish off our limit each day for sure. And just obviously take us back to whenever your passion for bass fishing even came into play and what really made you get into something like this? Yeah, um, we always grew up fishing. My family was definitely a fishing family and I got glimpses of bass fishing from my dad and from my grandfathers and stuff. but. Um, my high school archery coach, he was a tournament bass fisherman and he kind of took me and showed me that next level and I was, I was hooked from there. Tyler, let's talk about uh, Pickwick. I mean, that's a huge body of water and I, I, think you've, I think you've been on it at least once. Yeah, I've been on it a few times. What, what are you guys doing to prepare? Uh, we're going to try to go down um, before our off limits closes off and um, scan around, try to get re-familiarized with the lake. But the biggest thing is just um, before you ever get down there, map study so you can um, um, take your time that you have down there to practice efficiently. Because uh, it's a really big place. Um, there's gonna be a lot of boats down there. So you're gonna, some things, even though it looks good, you're gonna, somebody else is gonna beat you there. So it's not as simple as just, man, that's the five best looking places on the lake. Let's go catch them there. Cause, um, it just doesn't always work like that. And so uh, going down there and pre-practicing, practicing with our maps and looking at Google Earth and all of the things like that. And then uh, really just focusing and being time efficient when that uh, practice hits right before the tournament. So. 
So when is the tournament and how many days of preparation are you kind of planning on getting before you actually get to take on the water? Yeah, we're going to go down there for a couple days next week before our um, off limits time hits and then Official practice opens Monday, I believe August 7th, so we'll be down there then. The tournament starts August 10th through the 12th. And there's also, uh, Tyler, if you will, tell the audience, there, there's some sponsorship uh, packages available for some local businesses or, or somebody that just wants to support the WKU bass team. And Lauren, I think your name has to be Hudson in order to make a national championship <laughs> because his dad and himself, I think are the only ones in the last, I don't know, quite a few years that have made something uh, like this. Uh, hopefully we'll get to the NCAA tournament in basketball this year, but we'll see. I think Lutz is going to do a good job, but I don't know if Lutz is a fisherman or not. <laughs> I'd have to get him out on the boat, Tyler. Um, well, coming up, I mean, all you can do is prepare and hope the weather stays where it's at. I mean, there's just yeah. so many factors. Mm -hmm. So day one, I mean, you guys, the early bite, are you thinking about throwing? What kind of lures are you going to go after? I'm thinking uh, offshore is probably how it's going to be won. Um, I don't know that for sure. I think somebody in that top ten for sure will find something off the beaten path that not everybody is, um, not everybody has found. And so that's kind of our plan. We're going to definitely keep the offshore thing honest, um, but maybe go try to find something that not everybody else is doing. Kind of do a Keith Poche kind of deal, right? Kind there. Of I know some, what you're, I know what you're get talking. Out of the way yeah, that's the way to do it uh, for some people. But in terms of sponsorship wise, yeah. Um, we'd love to have anybody support that we can have. It's not a cheap hobby, and um, so we are going to. Uh, we're definitely looking for sponsorships. I'm planning on having my boat wrapped before we head down there, so that's a great way that we can trade some advertisement. Um, it'll be on there for a whole year, and so um, you'll get opportunities there for your company to be seen. But even around home, I fish all the time, so even. Even local companies, it would be a great opportunity. And then uh, we're going to do some stuff with the jersey too, uh, get our name out there and get your sponsors on there too. So, And I think the last question for me, obviously, I mean, I start, I mean, I've been, everybody can fish like their entire lives. It's something that you can do no matter what, whether it's just going out on a lake or just doing something kind of at a more professional level like you do. Just what is like some advice that you would give to, kids or just anybody in general about just getting into it yeah um keep it fun it's not all about tournament fishing i really enjoy the thrill of tournament fishing and stuff but um in terms of learning it's just time on the water you can only learn so much off youtube and studying maps and stuff you just got to get out there and learn learn little niches that happen because the sun came out this worked things like that and so uh yeah just time on the water my uncle uh, and my family, I come from a bass fishing family, Tyler, right there at Nolan, and yeah. where your dad's back backyard was. And my uncle actually kept a journal every single time. He, of course, you know, you didn't have computers and stuff back then, but he kept a journal. And to this day, I mean, it's the weather, where he found them, how deep they were, yeah. uh, all that kind of stuff. And I tell you what, as cool as tournament fishing is, and I've got to be a little bit of that in my life, never got to do anything as cool as you're getting to do here with Evan mm -hmm. McNaughton. Uh, but sitting on the bank with some bobbers, and some worms or some minnows is just as fun, right? Absolutely. We love crappie fishing, bluegill fishing. Um, we do it all. Uh, that's why I love having that lake house and stuff. It gives us an opportunity to go relax, too. It's not all about running 70 miles down the lake <laughs> and running everywhere and high stress. It's, uh, it's an awesome thing that you can do until you grow old, so I'm glad to have it. Good luck to you guys down there. I, mm -hmm. I would just, first of all, just getting there. It's plenty cool, but I mean, right. if you guys were to go down there and shock the world, that would be, I would love that, man. But congratulations, you guys. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm excited to get down there. Well, with that one, we're going to wrap this interview up, and we will be back after the break to wrap us up on this edition of Sports Connection. <laughs>